Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this afternoon's information session about the FYI program that you all were invited to. My name is Brittany Jackson. I am an assistant director of admission here at the University of Puget Sound. I work with students in the city of Seattle, uh, South King County and Tacoma. If you are from none of those places, it is still wonderful to have you here and wonderful to meet you. Uh, I'm going to start our event tonight with a land acknowledgement, making sure that we pay homage and at the very least acknowledge that this land was not originally ours is incredibly important to the University of Puget Sound. So I'm gonna take a quick moment to read a statement and then we're gonna get going with the program. We are on the traditional homelands of the Puyallup tribe. The Puyallup people have lived on and stewarded these lands since the beginning of time and continue to do so today. We recognize that this land acknowledgement is one step toward true allyship and we commit to uplifting the voices, experiences, and histories of the indigenous peoples of this land and beyond. So, uh, yes, we've acknowledged our land, which is incredibly, incredibly important. Um, and now let's actually get into the information into the information session. Um, first of all, thank you so much to everyone that took time out today um, to come to the event. A quick, some quick housekeeping notes, particularly about the space that we are in. Um, this Zoom meeting is being recorded. And at the same time, all of your mics have been muted and all of your cameras have been turned off. So um, no, no worries about that um, on the front end. If you feel like you need to get up, use the restroom, get some water, get a snack, please feel free to do so and move about place freely. Uh, in addition, I wanted to make sure that we also take some time to kind of contextualize why we're gathered, right? Why we're coming together. Um, and why this program? Why this moment? Um, and particularly, why am I talking to you? Um, so particularly as, a, as an admission counselor and as a member of the Office of Admission, it is really important to me that we have as many touch points with our incoming students as possible, particularly in this virtual time. So many things are changing and um, so many things are changing also for the better and making sure that we have touch points and we engage with our students as much as possible in an authentic way is a top priority to our office. So always want to say first and foremost, thank you so much for being here and thank you for taking time to be with us. So this program, why you were invited to FYI Puget Sound this program is far more than a prep program or an orientation program or a bridge program or anything like that. Uh, you were selected for the FYI Puget Sound first year experience program um, because you were identified as a student with the most potential to make a significant academic, social, and cultural impact on our campus. Uh, what, why do we care about all of that impact um, and prepping for it, right? Because with all of that raw potential, particularly at a school like the University of Puget Sound with its own very distinct culture, making sure that students have as much time to prep and get a running start for that experience as they can is very, very important to us. Um, also, full stop, um, the University of Puget Sound as a distinct campus with a distinct culture, um, that means that it takes time to adjust to, particularly as a national campus. The students coming to us from all corners of the country and from all different types of lived experiences, as much of a getting ready process as we can provide, we definitely want to do that. Um, particularly given that Personally, for me, um, I am the multicultural admission coordinator. I think a whole lot about the University of Puget Sound, who we look, what we look like, who we represent, how accessible we are, and also how to add more to that mix. What are we doing on campus? What kind of voices do we need to be elevating? Who can we bring into the space? And particularly, you all have been identified as students that can do that with some serious impact and some serious heft. Um, and so what makes this particular introduction different than let's say orientation, right? When you meet the rest of your freshman year class and when you meet the rest of your class members. Um, this program is distinct also because all the prep that you have been doing up to this point can be 
can feel a little bit like preparing for an event or preparing for a big moment, kind of like a wedding or a birthday or even a graduation, right? Coming off of a graduation. There was so much prep involved getting you to that point that that prep and that planning can like take the fun out of almost the entire experience, right? <laughs> um, and also when you go to an event, that event can be great. That event can turn out meh. But the best part of any event, particularly as any event planners or folks who've had to plan events know, the best part of any event is the few hours or few days or few moments just before the actual event starts when you have time to get ready, to get prepped, and to get hyped. That is the funnest part of any event, particularly because, you know, the planning takes forever. The event is going to be what it's going to be, but at a certain point, the planning's done, the prep is done, and it's time to launch. And there's that special moment right in between where students get a chance to just go, you know what, I did it, and here we go. That's what FYI is, that's what this moment is, and that's what we definitely want to create and share with you all. Uh, so, what we're going to cover in this session in particular, like giving all that framing to what FYI is, why you were invited, and why particularly myself, uh, we're so excited to, to meet you and bring you into the space, um, is to also give you some context for what that actual experience will be like. So in this session, you'll be able to meet student leaders who are going to be with you in that getting ready experience and in that hyping up experience. Um, these students are gonna be guiding you throughout that way and you'll be able to hear from them and hear anecdotes about their experiences and what they hope for. We also have three very, very special guests. We have faculty members and the director of the program with us today to share their insights and also their reflections on what inspired the program and what we can look forward to. So making sure that you all have some face time with them, we're super excited about. Um, now, before we get into all their introductions, we want to learn about you. We wanna know who's in the Zoom with us, who's in the space. Um, so we're going to do a really quick exercise. We're going to do a really quick introduction exercise, which shouldn't take too long. Um, but if you have access, if you have access to your chat box, please open up your chat box. Um, and we're going to have you type out, particularly for accessibility needs, we are going to have you type out your introductions. Right? We'll spend some time talking about ourselves and giving more context. Um, we definitely want to hear about who you are and where you come from. Uh, so first we'll want, let me see. Let me drop this into the chat here. So in the chat box, if you can type your name, your preferred pronouns, your intended major, and if you are undecided, that is totally fine. Said to lay a Puget Sound, you get to the end of your sophomore year to confirm and declare that major, so you're totally good. Um, intended major, hometown, and if you're a student athlete, you know, we have a lot of student athletes out there and we, and two of our student leaders can speak directly to that experience as well too. Um, and the final bit is your accessibility needs, particularly because this is a virtual event. I know there are some events that can be in person. This one in particular is virtual. Um, if you can also share with us your accessibility needs regarding internet, you know, if you if your internet's choppy and you would like us to speak slowly or something along those lines, also please add that in your introduction. Um, and if not, then you can just say your accessibility needs are met. So we're going to give you a few moments to type that into the chat, and then we're going to count down to when all of those introductions should be in the chat, so that we can all kind of see who's here, see who's present, learn about you. Wonderful to meet you, Erica. Yes, all parents that are here for this session are definitely welcomed. Wonderful. Yes, keep all the introductions coming. We're gonna give it, we're gonna give it about 16 more seconds. Keep the introductions coming and then we're gonna count down to when all of those should, when we should hit send. Fun tip, if you hit 
enter, it'll allow you to return in the line so you don't return into the box. That might be what some people are having some trouble with. So shift enter um, will allow you to write everything in once, one, um, one go. And count down to intros in five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead and hit enter. Hello to all the parents out there. Yes. Love to see all of these. Love to see all of these introductions. Welcome. Welcome, Sandra. Hi. Hi, Omarion. Good to see. Hello, Silver. Welcome to the space. Welcome to the space. If you are still working on your introduction, you're still working on your introduction, um, please continue to do that. We wanna hear more about you. Um, we wanna keep the train moving with some of these conversations as well too. Um, and we have a lot of people for you all to meet. So uh, if we can have our, our distinguished faculty that are, that, are in, that are gathered and our student leaders who are with us tonight, um, we're gonna have you all introduce yourselves. If you can give us your names and your preferred pronouns, your titles, your hometown, and a small tidbit about what you did in your summer before college prep. What did your summer before college prep look like? What did it feel like? Bring us back to that moment, bring us back to that place. Um, and I am going to start with Dr. Brackett. Thank you, Brittany. Hello, everybody. So I'll start off with saying that I am the director of this program. Um, and this is actually the first year, so I'm the inaugural director. So this is a big deal for me and I'm planning on making sure that it's the most successful that, that we can have because we wanted to keep going. Um, so thank you for spending time with us today. So Dr. Latoya Brackett, I go by Dr. Brackett, Professor Brackett. I'm very particular about that. Uh, I think that we all should recognize what we've earned and where how far we've come. And I'll get back to that at the end when I talk about what I did before I started my first uh, semester. Uh, she, her, hers for me. I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm sure most of you are like Charlottesville. I've heard of that. You know of that from 2018, August, and the uh, situation of the Unite the Right in my hometown, which I was not surprised at. I just wasn't there. And social justice is a theme that we're talking about in this program. Um, I can't remember. I think that was basically everything for that. Oh, I'm an assistant professor of African American studies at Puget Sound, but I'm also a member of the leadership team for the Race and Pedagogy Institute. I know we just threw a whole bunch of words at you, acronyms, all that. Don't worry. You can go to the link. You can check it out. You'll learn more about us in that way. Um, and we are open books. So um, welcome. And so I went to Cornell University for my undergraduate degree. And guess what I did right before I went to college? I went to a program similar to this. So Cornell has had a program like this called um, Pre-Freshman Summer Program for quite some time, um, decades. And it's a very successful program and it allows you to kind of get acclimated to campus. And that's what I got to do. And I also did my dissertation work on um, retaining students um, at, um, at university. So this is really key to my heart and I wanna make sure that it's a success. So um, I'm really great about, I wanna be transparent with you all. I wanna help, I want you to recognize that we are also launching this. So uh, what you give feedback you give us to us today, if we don't have the answer today, we'll give you the answer by the end of next week if we can. So please just uh, bear with us for that. The last thing I'll say, because I don't have as much energy as I would like to have, is that I was traveling for two and a half months from Ghana to Kenya to um, Zanzibar, and I just got back on Sunday, so I'm kind of tired, uh, which can give you a little fun fact that I started taking students um, to Ghana two years ago, and I'll do another one summer 2023. Uh, preferably for African American studies majors. So I'm going to go ahead and hit there. You should sign up for that. We're the only major in the entire state, by the way. We're the only people that give you a degree in Black studies in the state of Washington. And I don't even think 
Oregon has it. So welcome. And I'm going to pass it over to <laughs> pass it Professor Bristow, who just put her little hand up there, uh, who is also someone I've been working close with since I've been here for, this is my, oh, fifth year? Oh, wow. Yeah, I think fifth year. All right. Professor Bristow, handing off to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Brackett. And it is just so great to even just to see your names on the screen is wonderful and to be here with my colleagues is, is so wonderful and, and with our student our um, student assistants and student athletes. My name is Nancy Bristow. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I've been at the university a little longer than Dr. Brackett. I don't even want to say how long. Okay, 31 years. I'd be old, but that's okay. I bring some energy anyway. Um, I teach in the history department. I have a focus in my own research on social justice questions. Um, my most recent book that came out last year was on a shooting at a historically black college um, done by white police officers. Um, and I work alongside Dr. Brackett on the RPI, the Race and Pedagogy Institute leadership team. Our, our preoccupation, those, those big words say that we're interested in issues around race as it intersects with the classroom and education. Um, I was born in Portland, Oregon, just a little way south of here. Um, and I was a student athlete. I was a, a Title IX baby. So I was on the first varsity soccer team, women's soccer team at my high school and my college. And the summer before I went to college, in fact, I mostly couldn't find work because we were in the middle of a terrible economic collapse in this country. We were in the middle of an oil crisis. So you couldn't drive anywhere. There was no college prep. They just dropped you at school. You got on a plane, you got off a plane, completely unprepared, terrified, excited, all mixed up into one big thing of emotion. And so I mostly just played soccer that summer. I'll just be straight up honest. Uh, and I will pass the mic over to my wonderful colleague, uh, Dr. Rouse. Thank you, Dr. Bristow. Uh, so I'm uh, Dr. Melvin Rouse. I use uh, he, him, his pronouns. And uh, program affiliation, I am in the psych department but I also am in the program in neuroscience. We have a neuroscience minor, and I'm also on the governing board for the gender and queer studies major now. See, we got that. Yes. And uh, GQS, uh, we honestly, there's, there's a lot of interrelations because it's an interdisciplinary uh, uh, major. And so there are several African American studies classes that also count towards the GQS major. So even if you don't want to be an African-American studies major and you want to do GQS, you can still get some of that crosstalk in and, and sit in on Dr. Brackett's class because Dr. Brackett is brilliant and so is Dr. Bristow. So you should take classes from both of them because they're amazing. But my hometown, I'm actually from right down the road uh, where Dr. Brackett's from, uh, a place called Richmond, Virginia. Uh, hometown, uh, still love it. Um, and what I did the summer before college, I actually did a like Dr. Bragg, a program similar to this. So uh, once upon a time, I was supposed to be an engineer. And so because I got accepted to the engineering program at Virginia Tech, there was there's a center for the enhancement of engineering diversity. And they had this pre-college summer uh, uh, program uh, that I was a part of. And so it was two weeks on campus, really intense classes like, okay, this is what it is to be an engineering major. This is what are the expectations and it, 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 it opened my eyes to the whole experience. And I actually value that experience in no small part because I got community out of it. And even though I didn't stick with engineering, I still had those people in my life that I could go to and you know study with or more likely go on event sessions. Like just, I don't like this, I don't like that. I'm mad about this. And it's because sometimes you need that release, but you can't get that release if you don't have community. And so that's one of the, the things that I personally am going to try and emphasize a lot in this program is, you know, building that network for you all because community is important. And I, I think I hit all the points. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, let's pass it to Kalina. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Kalina Cordero. Uh, I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm going to be a senior this year and also an FYI student leader. Um, I'm majoring in, I'm double majoring in political theory and African American studies. Um, and my hometown is Tequila, Washington. I'm really close to campus. Uh, I wanted to stay close to home. Um, and my summer before college prep, um, honestly can't really remember what I did, but I know I went to a pre-orientation for Puget Sound. 
Um, I got to come to the campus and do some activities with student leaders that I'm sure were probably involved with orientation. Um, and I got to learn about different departments and learn about like the Student Diversity Center and the Yellow House and a lot of things that I probably wouldn't have really figured out um, if I had just arrived on campus without going to that. Um, and so um, it makes me really um, happy to be a part of this, to be able to share some of my experience um, and uh, be involved in some college prep that I wasn't able to be a part of before I got there. So, um, and I'm also uh, on the varsity women's soccer team. So yeah, um, uh, I'll pass it to Donovan now. Unmuted. Oh, hold on. Having issues unmuting. Okay, I'm good now. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Donovan Wilson. I go by he, him pronouns. I'm an incoming senior. Um, I'm a double major in African American Studies and Business Administration. Um, I'm also a part of the men's basketball team here. And I'm originally from San Jose, California, which is where I'm at right now. And um, coming into college, like Kalina, I also don't remember a whole lot, but I know for a fact that I didn't have any like pre-college work aside from like orientation. So I think like definitely like Kalina, I'm grateful to be a part of this opportunity to help everyone that's a part of it. Awesome. Thank you everyone for introducing yourselves and thank you for taking time to be with us, particularly this evening. Um, happy to know that there are um, questions coming in the chat. Please continue to send and drop your questions there. We want to make sure that we are as responsive as possible. Um, and if we don't have the question, the answer right now, we can get them to you later. Um, so, okay, we're going to transition into our kind of larger discussion about the program, what it's going to look like, what it was inspired by, and to give us that context for some of the basic components of the program, um, what you can expect, what particularly are the key elements and the highlights to the program, I'm going to pass this off to um, our director, Dr. Brackett, um, but also call in the support of Dr. Bristow and Dr. Rouse um, to provide their insights, particularly for some of the subject matter um, and other structures. Dr. Brackett. Good. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm just going to briefly share with you just um, some PowerPoint slides just to help folks so we're not just talking at you because it can be harder to, to, to follow along. Uh, so if you go to the website, which I just had up and I could probably just put it in the chat box, you can find most of a, a good deal of this information, but being in the session and being folks who have uh, accepted our invitation and plan to come. We we're able to give you a little bit more insight um, to the program. But overall, we have a what, you know, it's a pilot summer transition program, basically, as we've been talking about. And you've got faculty who've done such things uh, ourselves um, to earn, but you'll also earn tuition free academic credit by completing the summer short course. Um, and then in the fall, you'll be in a GPS course, which is just kind of a continuation with your advisor. So Professor Rouse and Professor Bristow are your advisors. So one of you, you between, we'll have two groups in the um, program and one group will be with Professor Bristow and one group will be with Professor Rouse. So you get a really great head start with being able to connect with your advisor ahead of time. And your advisor will also know how you work in the classroom. So when um, you go into uh, your other classrooms, they kind of know how you work and they can be better able to support you when you have any concerns uh, with uh, academic things, being able to talk to professors. And of course, Professor Bristow being here for 31 years, she knows this campus in and out, um, which also knows she means she knows almost everybody on campus. So, uh, you know, you've got some really great uh, resources just uh, with Nancy alone, and then you have the rest of us. Um, the goal is to develop a sense of belonging, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, we wanna make sure that you feel like you're supposed to be here. One thing that I experienced at Cornell uh, before starting was when I, so for Cornell, I went there for uh, it was eight weeks and it was in the middle of the summer. So they actually flew us up. We did eight weeks of coursework, um, hung out with folks, got to know people. And then we went home for two weeks and then I came back. 
And when I came back, people were asking me, me where the Uris Library was. And I was like, oh, it's over there. And I felt like I already knew that this was my place and I already belonged. And we want to make sure that you just, you're ready to go. You're going to be ahead of the game. People are going to come in on the regular uh, um, orientation day and you're going to be like, oh yeah, we already did that. That's the goal. We really just want you to know that you're you're supposed to be here. We're And we're really happy for you to be here. And so we want to just give you this little head, head start. Uh, develop a sense of ownership. That's also what I was talking about. And of course, the incentive, which we don't publicize too much, but we did in your invitation letter, is that you'll receive free textbooks for the entire first year. Now, the requirement is that you finish the two-week program um, in a in a, a, a positive academic standing to be able to benefit from that first year um, uh, free textbooks. So we got you covered for that. That's a cost that I'm sure Brittany can yell at you what that cost could be based on financial aid packages, which they usually tell you. Um, let's see, let's click over to the next one. If it's gonna click, you know, this whole Zoom one never, okay, there we go. Who, the program is meant for selection of incoming students, all of you and plus some, not everybody is here. We have total right now, I think 30 folks. So it, another great thing is that it's a tight knit group. It's not gonna be this huge, uh, cause my, my program was like 150 people in one building at Cornell and that was a lot, but Cornell is also 14,000 students where we're not that. So it's really great that you're gonna have a small cohort of folks and you're gonna know each other and be able to really uh, connect with folks from across the campus as well. So when the program is August 7th through Friday, August 20th, each year, FYI, we're gonna start two weeks prior to orientation. So one of the parents just put in the chat box, I think this is a good time for me to try to address it to everyone. I was talking to Polly and her husband behind the scenes. Um, they had a concern about, uh, orientation, um, they got a, a letter about orientation requiring students to come four days earlier um, because of COVID protocols. Unfortunately, we haven't been involved in that. That's a higher, higher level situation and that's orientation for the entire campus versus us. It looks like they're trying to verify people's vaccinations. Um, the reality is I don't think it's a quarantine situation because when I was looking at the orientation um, on their website, it's not telling you that you're quarantining at that time. I think it's just something they added in addition. So this might be that we're doing a verification process, maybe virtually ahead of time before you even arrive. Um, so Polly, I hope that's additionally helpful and also for the other parents, but uh, I don't think we're gonna be trying to get y'all to come four days early for this. That's not that's not what we're gonna be doing. So chances are it's still gonna be August 7th. And if at all, if the school policies and procedures are like, hey, we really wanna give a bus buffer and it might be August 6th, but I would not be moving it any further ahead than that. And I just wanna give you that heads up. And Polly, thank you for that question because you're giving us insight into what might be happening in other logistical components that we need to pay attention to because welcome to the world of higher ed during COVID-19 things are always changing. And so we really hope that you're able to, you know, recognize that we're doing our very best to keep you informed and also not to make it any more difficult for you because that also makes it more taxing for us. So the goal is not to add that to your plate. Um, okay, so where participants will be able to move into their residential hall communities for the entire two week short course. So that means when you move in, y'all are moved in. When you move in, it is your dorm room. That is the goal. We don't want you to come in for two weeks in one room and then have to move over. You're going to be settled in the space. That is what we're goal, our goal is. I'll be meeting with Residential Life next week just to double check to make sure that they know who's on the list and putting you all in those spaces. So hopefully that's something for you to, to think about as well. So you'll be really settled in when everybody else is kind of moving in, which is a really nice thing. Um, so moving in early, connecting with the campus, meeting your, their advisors. You all just met your advisor <laughs> just now. Um, learning from current professors, that's us. Bonding with student leaders, you met two of them already. We still have another three lined up that you don't, that are also very, really, uh, really dope students. I handpicked them, so you know they're dope. Um, claiming your study spot in the library, right? You get to see everything before everybody else does. You get to see Puget Sound in this quiet state, and I will guarantee y'all will be like, man, why they come, why are everybody coming now? I wanna, this, this is supposed to be my campus. Sorry, it is the reality. Um, best campus food, being able to chest. And then of course you've got Kalina and Donovan and all the other uh, student leaders that are gonna be able to help you uh, decide what food might be the best choice and what might not. Um, <laughs> and then of course we'll be in the classrooms, multiple classrooms. So you're gonna be able to kind of know exactly what it feels like to be at Puget Sound in the classroom. And that's the goal. Uh, we're gonna be hanging out in Tacoma. We've got some stuff up our sleeves that we haven't really figured out yet. Um, some of the professors we were talking last week about an outing um, related to our social justice theme 
Um, and then knowing what to expect on the first day. Like after you do this for two weeks, you already know what's gonna happen in the classroom. And you'll be able to communicate with your advisor weekly in the group to be able to assess how things are going. So that's it. Like, so understanding the values and principles of liberal arts, right? Um, become acquainted with and comfortable with level of academic engagement. We want you to know this is how it's gonna be and you're ready. Um, identify potential challenges in transitioning. This is the other thing. We have it built so that when you're like, hey, I'm not really sure about this, we're, we got your back. And you have so many different people that you can say this to, and we're here to hear it. That's the point of this program. You should never feel shy to just say, I don't get it. Trust me. I actually say that still to this day. I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. And if you can't do that, I think as a professor, that says something about wanting to engage and learn. And I want y'all all to feel very comfortable and confident to be able to just say, I don't, I, I need this information and knowing that we're going to give it to you. If we can't give it to you right away, we're going to go find it. We have really great resources. Um, identify the various resources on campus and familiarize yourself with the campus and Tacoma community, right? So these are the kind of things that our goals are. Um, and then quickly, I'm just going to go over the curriculum, but I don't want to do too much in depth here because the reality is it's all about when you're here. Don't worry about this. Just know that it's going to be fun. It's going to be engaging. Um, and it's and it's liberal arts. Like that's one of the great things and probably one of the reasons why you signed up to come to the school. So we have three part short course, right? So you're going to get, um, you know, uh, credit towards graduation from this. Um, that you don't have to pay for, which is nice. And one of our uh, our probably most intense course is the ones that Professor Rouse will be teaching and Professor Brister will teach um, two different sections and that's oral and written communications. So this is kind of like you all are signing up for, I don't know if someone else is touching my screen. Um, you all are signing up for um, uh, SSIs, which are like our writing courses. That's kind of this ahead of time, but smaller, more compact, but it's going to get you in the writing game and we're going to be able to help you out with that. And then we have a quantitative reasoning, which Professor um, Martin Jackson, who is actually retiring after the fall, after the fall semester, uh, he's like, no, I want to do this. So he wanted to come back and he's currently the chair of the mathematics department and we're going to do some quantitative reasoning. No, you're not going to be doing algebra, long division, all that stuff. You're going to be doing some really hands-on social justice oriented kind of survey driven um, math engagement and, and more of that intellectual uh, qualitative understanding of what quantitative is in our everyday. And then we're gonna have some sessions with academic resources. So you're gonna have like financial aid people pop in, of course, advising folks will pop in. We'll have some technology folks pop in and make sure you're, you've got you know your email on your cell phone, whatever you need. And of course, at the end of the day, you have student leaders around you all the time. They know most of the answers. And if they don't know the answer, they're gonna ask us to make sure that we give it to you. Um, and then finally, social justice is the theme because uh, we've been told from admissions, that's what you all wanna talk about. So that's how we're basing the selection on it. And that is definitely what we're all dealing with and engaging with and seeing right now. Um, and you've got three awesome professors who do this already in our personal lives and our professional lives. This is what we do. We write about it, we teach about it um, and we're out there. Actually, this is probably the back of my head over here. Um, and this is Dr. Livingston over there. So, and Professor, I'm pretty sure Professor Bristow's in there somewhere too. And Professor Rouse, I saw him earlier at this rally with his daughter. So welcome to, uh, you know, FYI. And I think that that was the last thing that I wanted to share um, with you all from this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, unshare and pull that down. And then I think we're, I'm good to go and I'll just stop there. Um, yeah. That's perfect. Uh, Yes, we love to see Melvin's children. <laughs> um, so now I'm actually going to pass things over to Kalina and Donovan as two of our student leaders who you'll be working with and engaging with and who will be guiding you also through this experience to share a bit about what they are looking forward to actually doing and engaging and then also what they're hoping for in this experience. Uh, let's head to Donovan first this time. It's not letting you unmute. <laughs> Can someone help them? Un there we go. Wait. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I guess mostly I'm looking forward to just engaging with like all the students. So I'll be a part of this. 
Um, like I said, I didn't have like anything like this coming into college. Um, and aside for like me playing basketball, I probably wouldn't have known too many people on campus. So I think definitely like having this definitely allows you to meet other people on campus. And I'm excited for that just to see incoming students be able to meet other people and hopefully ease that transition from high school into college. Um, but yeah, I'm just excited to work with everybody. I know like Dr. Brackett said, the other student leaders are really cool. Definitely some of my best friends on campus. So um, I'm excited. And Kalina, what about you? Yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to meet everyone for sure. Kind of like echoing what Donovan said. Um, and also just um, like going through this process with you, like learning with you um, and just um, like how Donovan said too, I wouldn't have had a good group of friends probably if I didn't join with the soccer team right away. I mean, I'm sure I would have found great friends, but it's just like, it was comforting to know I had that group. And um, because like, you'll be here earlier and you'll kind of start to find your people possibly in this group, it will definitely make that transition 10 times easier um, when you feel like you have some support around you. And also seeing some faces of like upperclassmen that um, maybe you wouldn't meet in a regular setting and um, getting to know some of them too, because it can make it a little less intimidating when you go into the sub for lunch. So um, I'm really excited to um, share my like share this experience with you all and um yeah the student leaders are dope um so it'll be fun to meet all of them eventually awesome awesome um thank you to everyone uh, and thank you to all of our panelists for sharing some insights and also giving us a brief introduction to the program itself and some of the more key components and elements and things that students are going to be engaging with with our last like 20 minutes of the session, I wanna make sure that we save a solid chunk of time for answering any questions. I know there are also several parents out there, which is also what we we're hoping for with the timing of this, of this session. Uh, so if there are any further questions that you have about either the move-in process, also particularly as a member of the Office of Admission, if there are any questions you had about enrollment or any of the procedures around enrollment, I'm more than happy to answer those. Um, Yes, it, and please, please feel free to drop those questions into the chat box um, as we're as we're here and we're engaging. Um, I also wanted to ask actually a couple of our panelists while folks are thinking, if folks are thinking about any additional questions they might have, um, I would love to hear from our panelists about one surprising thing, one thing that surprised you about Puget Sound as you've been working here, as you've been teaching here, as you've been learning here. If there's something that surprised you in your experience that you weren't necessarily expecting. Um, I will go first. I will actually say that Puget Sound's athletic culture surprised me quite a bit. I'll be totally honest. I'm not an alumna of Puget Sound. Several members of the Office of Mission that, uh, that, are, that do work in the Office of Mission, they are alumni and alumnus of the institution, and I am not. Um, but I also went to a liberal arts institution, which was really small, and we didn't have a lot of student athletes. So to come to Puget Sound and see, not just that there was like as student athletics, which I think for my small liberal arts college felt a bit like a side dish, um, to come to Puget Sound and have it be this kind of full embodied experience and incredible facilities was, um, I, <laughs> to be honest, I was not prepared for, I was not expecting. Um, so that was, a, that was a bit surprising. And I think one of the more unique things about, um, about our culture. Yeah, any, any other things that surprised folks in their time working, teaching, and learning at Puget Sound? I, I got a question directly to me, um, so I just want to uh, share that, and, and I think it's important to try to share it with the whole group, because I'm not sure. Well, uh, actually, it's just follow-up, because Polly actually sent it to the whole group, I think, at one point, just asking whether parents can go into the dorms and whatnot, and I think this is, once again, over our heads, Polly. We're not the orientation people. We're specific to FYI, um, but... I, if they're inviting parents to campus, I don't think they're gonna say you can't move your child into their dorm room. I just don't know. I don't have the concrete answer to that. Um, I don't know if anybody else is aware and I can ask for that answer on um, to Justin, um, who is in charge of orientation on Monday, who I have another a meeting with, but I, I just don't know what that answer is. And once again, this is one of those things where it's COVID, Polly and everybody out there, we can't always even guarantee that what they tell us today will be what it will be when it comes because we don't know how you know um, COVID will respond um, and the new strains and things like that. So the other thing is I, I don't feel conf confident to even tell you yes or no because we still won't know for sure what could happen. 
And I am not in the authority and none of us in the space have the authority to say this is going to happen or that's going to happen. So Polly, if you feel, if I know you guys are driving, feel free to unmute um, to go back and forth with some um, comments, uh, more questions. It might make it a little easier. I'm more than willing for that. And then I also saw that Erica wrote, I think I've seen that you're not vaccinated. You need a negative test. It's required um, unless I think religious reasoning that our students have to be vaccinated to come to school. I do know that that's, that's that decision. So Erica, if for some reason there is a qualifier um, for your son, I think it was that you said that you were a parent of, uh, of um, Toby, I think uh, that would be something you'd have to talk to people beyond us um, to, to get that kind of response. So hopefully that's helpful. It is. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and thank you so much for uh, for the questions that you're providing because uh, it is an incredibly complex time, um, particularly for us as a small liberal arts college that prides ourselves on collapsing the space between the students so that they can connect with each other and also connect with faculty members. Being a residential campus is a huge part of who we are um, and, what, and part of what makes our education experience unique and frankly, and in all seriousness and all realness worth the money. And also making sure that that, that, that process is transitioned in the most thoughtful way possible um, is definitely what our campus leadership is focused on right now and, and is working towards. So um, we really appreciate your patience <laughs> with all these details flying around and with things changing so quickly. Um, it is definitely kind of a chaotic time. Um, so, so yes, please, please keep those COVID questions coming. And I can, I can imagine, at least to give, also hopefully to give some context, especially to what we used to do and what I guess move-in used to look like, possibly for how those, those requirements might change and how that move-in process might change given COVID. In years prior, just to navigate capacity and space, uh, there were, students who would actually be assigned a time in a particular way to move in. Plenty of college campuses do this where it's very layered and students move in kind of in waves. And, I can't imagine that this wouldn't necessarily be the case, um, but also if, but also in particular, um, making sure that families, if there are any families that do have specific health needs, I can imagine some of those might have changed in some time that those are also the give space and accommodation for um, yeah. plenty of plenty of nuances and details that are out there. So thank you so much for the questions, and we will definitely keep. We'll keep the information coming as, as quickly as we can. Um, hopefully this is one of many kind of touch points that we'll have over the summer as more details start to emerge. Um, uh, uh, I, I wanted to say that I know that students with special, like that do need that assistance, they actually move in a day earlier. Um, they, the university sets that aside already. So I'm assuming that would be a habitual, another thing um, in this case. Uh, Polly reached out again, but it was a direct message so not everybody saw it. She says this will make things rather complicated. Yes, Polly, it will be. Everything is complicated in COVID. I'm sorry, there's really nothing that we can tell you and I can't tell you something and then you use what I say as a, it's, we can't tell you anything concrete because we're not in a concrete time. Um, so everything is more complicated, but I think that the key here is, um, it, you know, they have a parent section, they have a parent session lined up for orientation, which means they expect parents to come. So your parent, if you, you can come, there should be access. You're going to have your, your kid will be with you. I'm sure they'll be, you know, so I, I don't know what could be extra. I would say that the one thing that I would say is to email us at fyi at pugetstown.edu and I can get back to you or send you to people that might have more information. But once again, even things change the drop of a hat when COVID happened, Students went on spring break and they got an email that said, you have, you're not coming back after spring break because that's just what COVID did. So we're all just trying to do this the best that we can and things do get complicated in this time, but we're gonna be successful. And so uh, that's, that's and, I, and I wanted to shout out Erica for saying that as a parent, there's a group that she says that's, that's really helpful for her and Facebook. So maybe that's something um, Polly, uh, that might be helpful for you. I know you, you said you can't unmute, so do let me know if you've gotten more insight from what I've said. It's not going to be your the, the answer you're looking for, and I can't give it to you. So I'm not going to sit and pretend that I can, uh, because I can't. Also, if there are any other insights that other panelists would like to share, um, and if you have questions that you'd like to drop in the chat, please make sure that the setting is set to everyone so that we can all see them and hopefully respond to them and provide any additional context. 
So I think uh, Jason Yoon has a question in the chat. Uh, what are the program core hours? Jason, is there a specific reason you're looking at that? Because uh, overall, you're going to be taking classes. Um, if you're an athlete and you are doing trainings in that time, do know that we're connected with uh, athletics. So that's not going to be an issue for you. Um, but overall, you're going to be doing things during the day and then you're going to have, you know, time at night. We're not trying to make this a, you know, 24 seven thing. Uh, we want you to be able to experience college like you would in the two weeks later. So uh, this will be a little bit more high impact, but it will still try to have the patterns of you have to figure this out on your own schedule versus you're in school from eight to four or whatever that time is. So you still have that flexibility. And the point is to make sure that you are able to engage with college the way you would be engaging two weeks later. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, obviously, because it's a small group, you all will be shifting through three classes. Um, on a day, sometimes it's only going to be two classes, which guess what? In college, it works that way. And sometimes you may not have class on a day. You're not going to have class on the weekend. So hopefully that's helpful for you, Jason. If you have a follow up, please feel free to even unmute if you want to. It's always nice to hear people's voices. Yeah, and I just, I, wanna, oh, <laughs> I just wanted to follow up real quickly with something that Dr. Brackett said, because it's time management is the thing to try and learn in this time because it's a it's a big transition like because you go through the high school system everything is scheduled for you you are in the building at eight o'clock well if you're an athlete or if you're in band or something you might be there at seven o'clock you might be there at six but you're there from this set hour to this end point and that's every single day college is very different and this is going to be some time for you to figure out okay does this work for me do i actually know what i need to do to manage my time properly and so so this is this is going to be something to look out for. And to quote what Dr. Rouse often says, right on to that comment. And I would add um, that for those who are parents of athletes or who are themselves student athletes, no, again, I just want to reiterate what Dr. Brackett said, which is the program is aware that we have student athletes in the program. In fact, I think it's it's maybe about half the student are actually student athletes. So know that that's not going to be an issue that's going to be woven into the program. And in fact, one of the themes is going to directly engage with issues around um, athletics. Um, Jason, it's not Jason, I think it's uh, Jason's parent that's actually speaking, but um, you're speaking about him working. Uh, we expect that students are not working during these two weeks. Unfortunately, you can't work during these two weeks. It's just not going to work out. We have, um, so the program is the classes, right? But then there's also other programming. There's also other activities that the student leaders will have. The goal is to get them acclimated to campus and not try to get them, act, you know, trying to do everything. So if he's taking off those two, because I'm assuming that that must mean he's local. If he's taking off those two weeks, he's getting acclimated to campus and he's going to be even better able to go back to work the two weeks later. And I think that if you wanna have that conversation, you, me and Jason, then we should. But the expectation is that students are not working because you're getting this free tuition for, this, for, this, for these credits to go. And then also you have to accomplish everything that's required of the program, which means being in the program, being in the space. You can't be on and off campus doing other things and us not knowing. This is, we're not babysitting you, but you have to be engaged and active. And that's going to include doing work with your peers for the quantitative reasoning um, program uh, uh, class, which means you're going to be doing group work outside. You're going to be meeting with faculty. So um, please feel free to email me if this is something that you weren't aware of. I'm, and I think that that's something we need to make sure we reiterate to local students that you can't work during these two weeks. We understand that that's a burden um, in various ways. And that's why we're doing our best to have incentives like free tuition that's adding to your, you know, um, your graduation, um, but also free books for a whole year, which means if you're going to make a thousand USD in those two weeks for books, we've got you covered. So that's the, that's the whole point of trying to have that incentive. So hopefully this will, this will help. No, you're very welcome. I'm hope, I'm glad that that's um, helpful. And like I said, reach out if you have a follow-up on some logistics about your individual self or your individual student, um, because that's something we are always picking up on and we need to make sure we reiterate and uh that might be a fact question that i need to put on the website that says should students be working during this time no so that's something that i also need to to reiterate so thank you for that question do we have any more i don't know if i i didn't see any um pop up i think i 
Thank you for keeping the questions coming in the chat. Thank you, Dr. Brackett and Dr. Rouse and Dr. Bristow for sharing your insights. Um, in these last few moments of the event, were there any final questions that folks had about either the FYI program itself, other questions about orientation or any parts of the enrollment process? If there are any questions about um, the forms that we're having y'all fill out, um, your APQ survey, those different things, definitely feel free to ask some of those as well too. Um, because first and foremost, particularly with all of these updates and all the changes that are happening on campus, um, so much of this cannot happen until uh, a student has finished the enrollment process and making sure that the admission office helps students and families as much as they can through the enrollment process, um, particularly navigating things like work study and all of that. Um, we want to make sure that we're doing Definitely stay on top of your campus email as well too. If you are a first year out there who has not created your PugetSound.edu email in your um, orientation checklist or your enrollment checklist, please go ahead and do that. Um, that gives you a direct main line into all of our campus goings ons and all of the information that's coming out too. So when the president's cabinet um, and other members and other leaders on campus do send out updates about COVID um, that can not only just come to you and maybe something through admission, particularly if you're still at deposited status, but also come directly to your inbox as a deposited student and as an enrolled student. Um, so definitely let me know if you have questions there. Oh, um, Oh, great question, Jason. Oh, so Jason sent a question about um, the advisors and if they are based on particular fields of study or if they're going to be um, advisors that are specific to this program. So are these kind of general advisors or are they program specific advisors? Great question, Jason. I mean, uh, I guess they're program specific, but it, it's hard for you to understand that overall our, our faculty, we get a list of faculty every year that decide to be advisors and then they get, um, you know, their classes assigned and whatnot. And so in this case, because you're in this program, we wanna make sure that there's someone with you, connected to you to, to ensure that you have what you need throughout the um, first semester. So um, we uh, that's that's what it's based on. I don't know if that's helpful for you. Um, so Professor Rouse and Professor Bristow, whoever is teaching you that one class about write, that writing-based class will be your advisor. Um, and you have them until you declare a major and then find another advisor based on that major. And you never know, maybe you declare a history major and you're still with Professor Bristow or a psychology major and you're still with Professor Rouse. So uh, hopefully that's helpful. Um, uh, let me know if you need more clarification, Jason. Of course, Nancy Bristow would know the most about advising because she'd been doing it for a long time. <laughs> and I would only add that, I, <laughs> okay, so yeah, I've been doing it a long time. Uh, the key is that the faculty at our university and the staff and faculty at our university talk to each other. So even if you know you're going to be a psych major, but you are assigned me as your advisor, that doesn't mean that I won't have Melvin on the phone. Dr. Rouse and I will be figuring out exactly what you need to do. So again, it doesn't matter what your long-term goal at the university is in terms of who your advisor is for that beginning. More important at the beginning is to have that connection to someone, somebody you feel like you can turn to with real questions. And so that's kind of the idea behind this program and, and why somebody like me is just crazy happy to be part of it. So it sounds like students are able to, so you'll have these advisors, they'll be assigned to you at the start of FYI, but you will keep them with you throughout orientation. And if you do have questions that are specific to FYI, they can answer those questions along with Dr. Brackett as the program director. And then also if any of your questions throughout your time during orientation, the first few weeks of school, if those end up shifting, um, then yeah, you can also bring them to uh, Dr. Rouse and Dr. Bristow because that, because essentially that is the, that is the advising flow with FYI, you're just starting in earlier. So major questions, uh, general ed requirement questions, all of those can be definitely directed to the advisors that you'll be placed with through this program. And, and they will be because you'll be taking a course with them that's only once a week and you get credit for it in the fall semester where you're literally seeing your, because students who get advisors otherwise are taking a class with those advisors in a different capacity. Um, and you all get to have more, I would say more relaxed class where you get to be like, hey, I don't know how to use the library. Can we go back to the library? And Professor Bristol's like, let's go to the library. I can actually see her like walking across campus with all of you just kind of walking with her. I can see it. Or even collaborating and meeting up at some point. So uh, you will have a space that a lot of students may not have because they might be taking a class that's a regular academic class with their advisor. 
and then they have to wait after class to talk to their advisor versus being in a class where you're literally talking about, I need help with this. Um, and that's what we're trying to set up for you. So, so you're there. And the other thing is, um, uh, the other thing is someone like Professor Brister, if you're like, I really am looking into computer science, who should I go talk to? Guess what? She'll know exactly who you should go talk to. So you don't have to go there blind. That's one of the skills I definitely wanna make sure all of you gain from this is knowing who to ask and, and trust to tell you who to go to that will be receiving you the way that you need to be received. So you're heard, respected, understood and seen, right? And that will be a key as well. And those are the, that's why I chose these faculty. That's why they're showing up for you two weeks before orientation. And I bet some of them are also doing bookends and orientation things because they wanna be here. And that's a really um, awesome thing to have. And I saw that Wynn had a question about Zoom meetings. I don't know what kind of Zoom meetings that is, Wynn, but again, the goal is for you to be dedicated to what's happening in the program. Um, if it's like once in the whole time of the program, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. But if it's something that's habitual and it's taking you away from dedicating your, your focus on the program, it could be something that might hinder you and chances are your, your advisor will pick up on it. Your, your peer, uh, your student leaders will support you through that and pick up on it and see what needs to happen. But I wouldn't worry about it, except if it's something that's gonna be like every day, right? If it's more than once in the two weeks, then, then I would say you need to think about that and have that conversation. Yeah, and just really quickly, this is an opportunity to get some uh, some advice. So, uh, apps, get a Google Calendar, figure out when the actual Zoom meeting is, see when your classes are, and actually figure out, okay, how much time do I need to prepare for the class and try and block that time off. So this is a bit of advanced time management crash course that you might have to experience when, uh, but it's a skill that you know you're going to need to develop. Um, but like Dr. Brack was saying, you should be focused on the program itself. And so as long as that meeting it doesn't fall within the hours of the class or any other sort of programming, then as long as you work out the time for everything else in terms of like doing your readings and writing, uh, then you, you, should, you should be able to, to swing it. Oh, great question, Kasiraji. Are you are you not a morning person, Kastriaji? <laughs> uh, I think we're it, it, it's it's um, I think it's like nine maybe, but it depends because we're still waiting on the uh, athletics timing because we also need to pour at some of the athletes for them. They you know so it all depends. But um, we're trying to make sure that we're done. Um, I think after lunch by like one thirty before two, we want to be done. Um, with all your classes that day. So that's that's all that I can just share right now. You'll get all that scheduling when you get here. Um, and, but you get just, yeah. And I would just say, don't worry too much about it because it's gonna be a group of people that you're gonna be hanging out with and you're probably gonna have a really great time even though you may not wanna be up at nine, I don't know. So uh, you also have to get breakfast and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think it'll actually be rather fun and you won't even think about the timing. That's what I would say. If that's what the issue or concern is, you could just be asking about time just as you want to. <laughs> well, I think that is actually with timing. I think that is the perfect way to segue into the end of the event and wrapping things up. Um, I have to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to Kalina and Donovan, Dr. Rouse, Dr. Bristow, and especially Dr. Brackett. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your expertise. And we are all eager um, to hear more updates as they arise and as they come out. As members and um, and staff and faculty that help to create and, and, and sustain this program, there will definitely be more information coming. If you have any other questions that come up after this event, you can definitely send them to fyi at cubitson.edu. Post this in the chat one more time. If you have any other questions specifically about the FYI program and some of the components, you can definitely send them there. Um, for now, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it there um, and log off and let you all get on about the rest of your evenings and hopefully getting some dinner and some rest. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we so look forward to meeting you in August. Thank you, everybody. Feel free to reach out. Um, can't wait to see everybody. Uh, Brittany, don't close out the.